Today I want to talk to you about cultural intelligence and how it can help you improve your adaptability skills. First of all, a little bit about cultural intelligence. It is defined as a capability of an individual or person to effectively function in situations of cultural diversity. From the very beginning when the concept was developed, the authors had a very practical orientation in that they wanted to provide a set of principles and skills that anyone can use to be able to perform better in intercultural situations. But what are these situations? A Canadian energy company that I worked in the past provides an excellent example of how cultural diversity applies in the workplace. This company was selling uranium to utility companies in Latin America, Asia, and Europe. It was also, employees were also working with partners and other employees in different geographic locations like United States and Germany, Australia and Kazakhstan. But cultural diverse situations don't only refer to working with people from different nationalities. They also include working with different subcultures. For example, members of different ethnic groups, um, minorities in general, and also working with people from different ages. Why do we need cultural intelligence and more specifically adaptability to behave well in intercultural situations? First of all, we need awareness and sensitivity to understand people they're different than we are. We also need to have the ability to adjust our thinking and behavior. What we learn from studying cultural intelligence is that people that have very low CQ or cultural intelligence can only react to external stimuli because they don't really understand cultural differences. As we start to recognize cultural norms, values, traditions, and behaviors, then we start to be able to slowly accommodate them into our thinking. And at a very high level, when we have high levels of cultural intelligence, we can automatically adjust our thinking and behavior when getting cues from the environment that the situation requires that. The strength and beauty of the cultural intelligence approach compared to other cultural frameworks is that one, it's very practical. So it's focused on giving you a set of skills or capabilities that you can use to improve your, your, your behavior and your ability to work well with others. And it's also an integrated or holistic approach in that it not only gives you the knowledge, but also it works with motivation, metacognition, which is the control of the thought processes, and behavior. So in the next few slides, I'd like to spend a few minutes describing each one of these four capabilities and then sharing some ideas to help you uh, practice so that you can improve your CQ capabilities. The first two CQ capabilities. First, CQ drive has to do with motivation. So the general idea to identify whether your CQ drive is high or needs further improvement is to identify whether you have the interest, confidence, and drive to adapt cross-culturally. An example would be do you enjoy working with culturally diverse individuals? You can think about situations of cultural diversity and whether it's something that you enjoy. Regarding CQ knowledge, the idea is to give you an understanding of how cultures are different or similar. For example, do you understand how cultural values and norms affect the way people think and behave? And here are some examples of things you can do to improve these two capabilities. You can think, for example, of an interest or hobby that you really like. 
you may really like sports or art, or maybe you just love different types of food. So how can you connect this interest, this natural interest with a cross-cultural component? One way to do that, for example, is if you like food, is that you make a point to visit uh, different types of restaurants, ethnic restaurants, and this will help you give an exposure to different people because you're likely going to meet people from different cultures, get a bit of an insight into certain traditions as well as expectations and values. With CQ knowledge, one way of practicing is to start reading news from different, in, more specifically international sources. And if you can choose one story and follow that same story across two or more countries, you start getting an insight as to how exactly different perspectives, attitudes and values impact the way the story is covered. There are different ways to improve these capabilities, by the way. So you can also improve your CQ drive by, for example, making a list of tangible benefits every time you're going to meet a client. What kind of benefit will you gain from being able to perform better in that situation? For example, you improve a relationship with a work colleague or client. Similarly, with CQ knowledge, there are other things you can do to improve that knowledge. When you are reading about a particular country, you may get also specific insights about this country's political environment, economic environment, as well as some of this country's traditions. You can also enjoy working uh, in and or forming a diverse book club which will allow you to read some stories and share ideas about how the same story is interpreted by members of this group. Some examples now, definitions and examples about the next two CQ capabilities, CQ strategy and CQ action. The CQ strategy or metacognitive CQ addresses whether you're able to plan, be aware, and make sense of intercultural situations. For example, are you able to slow down, observe, and draw on your cultural understanding to make sense of an intercultural situation? When something happens, for example, and you see that the meeting is not going well or the conversation is becoming difficult, are you able to observe what's going on and also observe your own thoughts about what's going on. Regarding CQ action or behavior, are you then, if you're faced with a similar type of situation, then adjust your communication and your behavior in a way that it will improve whatever is happening at that point, whether it's a conflict or just a sense that there's some misunderstanding going on between the people that are involved. There are other ideas as well that you can use to improve these two capabilities. For example, in my training program, I put a lot of emphasis on mindfulness because if you can improve your mindfulness, it means that your awareness and your ability to be in the present moment will improve. And this helps tremendously with CQ strategy as it will help you be very attentive to your own thoughts, your behavior, and those of the other person or persons involved. Regarding CQ action, there's all different things that you can do as well, a number of them. For example, you can practice with your communication style and see if you can adjust the words you use, slow down your speech, ask for feedback to see if the other person is understanding you the, the same way that you, you are understanding what you communicate. Many ideas to improve your CQ strategy and CQ action. One idea is to plan for a cross-cultural encounter. For example, meeting with a client from another culture, what can you do to prepare? 
one idea would be that you talk to somebody from that same culture or subculture to get a sense of what can you expect, what are some of the things that might be different compared to working with somebody from the same culture or subculture or ethnic group. Um, this will help you start the meeting already with some expectation as to what could go wrong or could create a potential misunderstanding. Of course, you still need to bring mindfulness into this picture because there will be many things that could that are unexpected or could be completely not planned for. For CQ action, you can experiment with a lot of different behaviors that get you out of your comfort zone. In the context of cultural diversity, one good thing to experiment would be joining a multicultural team. That will give you tremendous exposure to different groups, different age groups, for example, and how they behave and how their perspectives are different based on their backgrounds. You can also plan trips to places that are you are unfamiliar with and put yourself in a situation of feeling uncomfortable. I like to call that getting comfortable with the uncomfortable because the more you do this, the better you will get at it and you start feeling less worried and less concerned that the situation is unfamiliar. In conclusion, Mastering CQ and adaptability is all about practice. You can choose one CQ capability at a time, practice with it for a week, and then go to the next and the next and the next. So at the end of one month, you will have a complete cycle of exercises that relate to CQ capabilities. Then you start again and again and again. You can choose to start general by not focusing on one specific culture or subculture and then focus on a particular group that you would like to learn more about. Or you can make your entire practice around specific cultures or subcultures. You can choose one country at a time or one ethnic group at a time and then run the same set of capabilities and practice more focus on this group that you chose to work with. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it.